Hello and welcome everyone. This is our second video for the Technic computer craft tutorial type of stuff. And today we are going to go over some slightly more advanced stuff. I added more to the actual um, configuration I have here. I did not change any of the code under the pressure plates. I just have it so that uh, it still reads as forward, right, left, all that. Um, but it just does a little bit more on the screen as you can see. Yes, I did have some recognition on there or whatever you may call it. But uh, if you haven't seen my first video, I'd prefer you go to my channel, Mr. Sovar, to uh, check out my first video so you guys understand what I'm talking about. Um, the only feature I really added in here, and I'm going to be doing videos of like little bits of updates and stuff like that, so it might be more than just five videos, stuff like that. For now, um, when you actually go over a pressure plate, it moves the cursor on the screen, so it's sort of like your own little computer. And if you were to press the bottom cursor, it would, let's just make sure I'm on it, it would just kind of stay right there. And of course, if you go to the very bottom, it has a little bit of a tail because the refresh rate is a little off, but as you can see, it stays at the maximum resolution area. Oops. And sometimes it might go out a little bit, but it's kind of cool how that kind of works. Uh, I might make it so that if you go to one side, it'll appear on the other side, stuff like that. Um, I'm going to show you the code now for the actual computer. So let's do terminate, edit, start. And what we have here is the basic rednet.open, which is on the top again. We have some local variables right here. We have the refresh, the wire, xer, and click. Now the wire and xer is the x and y coordinates of where the cursor is. The click indicate it's a variable that keeps track, okay, did you click or not on this application or whatever. And the refresh rate, bleh, sorry about that, the refresh variable is just a variable that keeps track of how many frames per second has been going by before I have to clear the screen. Now, of course, the less refresh, the more smoother it is, but the less refresh, if you get to a point, it, the text doesn't even appear on the screen unless you, like, change something. <clears throat> um, so what we have here is refresh equals refresh plus one. This is just an increment for the refresh rate. For example, up here is zero. So when it goes through here once, it'll be one. And when we go through the loop again, it'll be two. And if it's greater than two, it will go through this thing called this if statement, which I will move all the way down. Uh, if refresh is greater than two, then term.clear. Now the term is basically a lot of screen functions. For example, term.clear will clear off all the information on the screen. It will also do term.set cursor position, which is wherever you print or write your information on the screen. It will actually position where your cursor is, so you can position text and stuff like that. So in this case it's one and one, which is in the very top left corner. And then refresh is equal to zero, because you don't want to just do this once and then just have all this information being placed on without refreshing the screen. Or else it'll just look like a bunch of letters and stuff like that. And you know what? I just might as well show you an example of that. So I'm going to get rid of this refresh equals zero. And I will show you what, what will happen to the code. So we do control, save, control, exit, type in startup. And as you can see, there's information on there. Let's move the cursor. Huh. It's kind of interesting. I didn't know it would do that. But as you can see also, the information just kind of goes away. and It just goes away on the screen and stuff. I thought it would actually leave like a trails information. Guess not. Anyhow, um, let's go to edit, start. I guess I should have tried that one before the tutorial, but oh well. Okay, so let's move. Oh, that makes perfect sense. Okay. I now know what to do. Should have thought about that. Okay, now you are going to see a trail of information. Or at least should. If it doesn't, then I kind of give up on that. So we got terminated. 
So yeah, there you go. You can. It doesn't refresh the screen at all, so it's like all there. It doesn't erase any of the data. So yeah, it's basically like paint in a way. You can paint stuff on the screen, but it's not so efficient. So let's uh, terminate by doing Control T. Edit start and then let's fix up the code a little bit <clears throat> okay it's greater and right here let's add the refresh equals zero resets the thing okay so moving down we already kind of explained this part but there is a wire equals wire plus one, xer equals xer minus one, xer equals xer plus one, and so on. The, the xer and the wire is the x coordinates and the y coordinates of where the cursor is. And by having the forward, left, and right back commands coming from the pressure plates, you can actually move the cursor around. Now the x comma y equals term dot get size gives you the maximum resolution to the far right and the far bottom since in the left upper corner is zero zero for the cursor coordinates the x and the y variables are just there so that the cursor doesn't go off the screen and prevents it from disappearing instead it just keeps you at the very edge like I, I showed you in the beginning of the video and so we have our right welcome to Mr. Sovar program and YouTube Mr. Sovar uh, it also like write is the exact same thing as print, but print you have a enter like you press return or enter key after you're done typing the text. Writing you can do multiple commands of write, and it will not have that return button at the very end. So I'll just keep on going as one big line basically. That's why we have the term dot set cursor position. I guess we didn't really have to do that, but it kind of shows the point of how the command works. And also these if statements. If xer is less than zero, then xer equals xer plus two end. That basically means that if xer is off the screen on the very left, then have it plus two. So no matter how many times you're pressing on the pressure plate, go left, even off the screen, it will stay at that one position, not going off the screen. Same thing for this, but for the x and the y, of course, are the maximum left or maximum right coordinates and maximum bottom coordinates. Or going downwards so uh, for example the maximum X will be way over here the maximum Y would be way under here and that's basically how that would work and by doing that this prevents the cursor from going off the screen and then we have the term dot set cursor position Xer and wire this actually positions the cursor or the letter a in this case in the correct position based on the coordinates Xer and wire and based on your pressure plates and stuff like that all the stuff I said before and then we re, yeah, we set the uh, position of the cursor back in the very left top corner and then we end the program from there on and that's how the program basically works um, of course I'm going to be adding more to it I'm gonna have turtle support GPS HTTP OS math all sorts of that great stuff so for now, let's save, exit, just start it up again. And now I'm going to go over some basics of what I'm going to be doing. And also, can you get rid of that? I have a little platform up here with a turtle. I don't have it fully functional yet, but oh my gosh, a taint. Ugh, now I know why I got a silver wood all over here. It's even all the way over there. What the heck? That's crazy. Anyways, back to the tutorial. I am going to try experiment with the turtle. Um, I know that ever since 1.4, I believe, came out, uh, you need to refill your turtle with uh, coal. There's a function in the turtle. But I'm just going to go over the basics of uh, the code that I already got in there. We got the rednet.open. I don't know which side to open yet. Again, this is code that I did not test or anything. But we're going to have a endless loop, a delay, so the program doesn't go crazy. Uh, ID, comma, message equals rednet that receive gets information from different computers and stuff like that. I've explained that in the previous video. Um, XYZ equals GPS.locate5. 
Now, I'm not really for sure about this command. I just kind of looked it up, saw how it worked. I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. Let's work with it. So the X, Y, and Z are like Minecraft normal coordinates, X, Y, and Z. We can use this to track where the actual turtle is on the Minecraft map. So we can not only just control it, but we can tell it, okay, go back home. So it'll dig its way back home and go to the position without destroying anything. It's really cool of a function, and I'm going to be tested in my next video, hopefully, if I get it working. I don't know if it'll be today or probably next week or the week after. I got a lot of stuff going on, but anyways, it basically just broadcasts the actual X, Y, and Z coordinates to the computer, and it also has like a feedback system, so like this control variable basically allows, it's like a boolean. If you don't know what a boolean is, it has two variables, an on and off, a true, a false. If you tell the turtle, okay, I want to control by the pressure plates, the control variable will be true. If you want to tell it to not, you just do the exact same command, it'll default to false. And you can go back and forth, true, false, true, false, but if it's true, you can actually control the turtle using the pressure plates. If not, it'll just stay idle there, keep on broadcasting its position, and I will eventually probably have some artificial intelligence in it, stuff like that. But again, thank you guys for watching my videos. Make sure to comment for suggestions. Uh, like my videos so more people can learn from this. And also support me by subscribing. I really love my subscribers. Thank you so much. I also like my viewers. I like commenters. Commenters. <laughs> uh, make sure to share it among Facebook, Google+, Twitter, whatever. I really appreciate it. I know it sounded like I didn't just by saying whatever, but <laughs> you know what I mean. But anyways, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. Make sure to subscribe and like. See you later.